Joining me now, News Nation DC Bureau Chief Mike Vicara. Mike, so let's time this out. How long can this type of inquiry investigation take? What do we expect? Well, that's a great question, Marnie, because as of today, the House of Representatives is gone for three weeks, not to return until January 8th after the new year uh, for their holiday break. And then we can expect them to hit the ground running and continue their public investigation now that they have this a formal vote of the House of Representatives that will authorize uh, a more formal investigation and try to bring some enforcement mechanism to what they claim, Republicans claim, uh, is stonewalling from the White House. The White House, as Tom reported, is uh, countered that they have supplied the document, the tens of thousands of documents to the committee. Uh, there has been testimony from associates of uh, Hunter Biden, Devin Archer, most principally a former business partner and close friend of the president's son. Uh, so the timeline, we're basically looking at the end of January, early next year for Republicans to either green light or uh, step back from initiating a formal impeachment of President Biden. And of course, next year is an election year that brings a whole host of questions, whether this is going to be a political winner uh, for Republicans, although they claim that this is not done on the basis of politics. You know, this is Washington. It's an election year. And so the problem is, is that Republicans have just three vote majority in the House uh, some of those Republicans who have seats were won by, their districts were w actually won by President Biden, voted in favor of President Biden. So while they went along with this inquiry, uh, and this is something that ma many in the base can go home and say, look, we are moving forward in this investigation, the Republican uh, base and, and the MAGA base. Uh, some of these folks that are on the fence, when it comes to actually voting to impeach President Biden, uh, that's going to be a different order altogether, especially in an election year. And Republicans in the House are not likely to move forward if they feel they cannot win that vote. They cannot, they would not, even if they feel like they have the evidence, they would likely not put that on the floor of the House of Representatives if they feel as though it would not pass. So a lot of uh, ifs here, a lot of contingencies, and we are far from finished as this continues to play out, Marnie. Mike, Tom talked a little bit about the specific emails that Republicans say they want, some of the documents and materials. What is required, though, to file an article of impeachment if it gets to that point? Well, I mean, an impeachable offense is whatever the majority of the House says it is, right? And so uh, it would go through the Judiciary Committee, led by Jim Jordan, of course, the, the conservative firebrand. We've seen a lot of him lately. He's part of this, these three committees that are doing this investigation, leading this investigation. Uh, and so, yeah, you, you know, we've heard uh, a lot about what the what Republicans are accusing the president of. And yet, uh, since they started an informal inquiry before they had this formal vote yesterday, they've had exactly one public hearing. And the one expert who they brought in to testify said the goods simply weren't there yet uh, that he was aware of to impeach President Biden. So they are hoping that further subpoenas of documents, more documents will reveal uh, business dealings between Hunter Biden, his overseas clients in China, in Ukraine and elsewhere, uh, and a quid pro quo that would involve the president of the United States. Uh, so far, there's nothing close to that. Well, we, we've seen a testimony from Devin Archer we just talked about, uh, who said that uh, Hunter Biden would often put his father on speakerphone when he was having meetings with some of these overseas clients but no allegation that actual business was done, no allegation that President Biden benefited, no allegation that President Biden weighed in as a policy matter, no allegation that President Biden as the vice president uh, or in any official capacity uh, put a thumb on the scale in favor of his son, Hunter Biden, uh, in order for him to uh, achieve his goals in helping these overseas business people. So a lot of unanswered questions, a lot of politics involved in this as we move into the new year and the inquiry picks up steam in January. And Martin. in regards to Hunter Biden and his surprise remarks this week, Republicans say they're going to start those contempt proceedings. What's the precedent for that? Well, I mean, the House has voted in the past to vote, to hold people in contempt for refusing to testify. Most recently comes to mind, of course, uh, President Trump's uh, key ally and conservative firebrand, uh, Steve Bannon, uh, was convicted. I believe he was ultimately pardoned by President Trump. That would require a full vote in the House of Representatives. And as we talked about yesterday, Marnie, the dicey part gets to uh, the Justice Department would have to actually bring those contempt proceedings. The House of Representatives, Congress does not have an enforcement mechanism. So it would be up to President Biden's own Justice Department uh, to bring forward contempt uh, proceedings. And that, of course, will get very interesting if it comes to that. Yeah, and pretty messy. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.